Are you looking for a sporty coupe with an authentic character and exhilarating performance? Well, this is the Toyota GR Supra. And in today's review, we're going to find out together if this is your perfect next car. The Toyota Supra is the Japanese brand's legendary sports car that's been in production for over four decades now. This is the fifth generation model that went on sale in the UK back in 2019 and it was the first to be produced outside of Japan at Magnusters plant in Austria alongside its cousin the BMW Z4. Um, as we'll find out throughout this review then, this car shares a lot of similarities with its cousin but also some very distinctive differences. When it came to designing the GR Supra then, Toyota ensured that it built on the heritage of past Supra models, as well as the original 2000 GT. Uh, it promises exhilarating performance and precise handling from that combination of the front-mounted straight-six engine, the short wheelbase, and the rigid body. While the GR Supra is set apart from its key rivals by the distinctive styling and bespoke tuning, it does face some very tough competition in its segment. Uh, firstly, we have the Audi TT, that's a more practical everyday alternative. This car's closest rival, the Jaguar F-Type, which similarly adopts that front-mounted engine and rear-wheel drive setup. So how well does the GR Supra handle UK roads and compete with rivals over two years on? In this comprehensive review, we will be putting the GR Supra to the test by exploring the exterior and interior design, the technology and practicality on offer, the different engine options, and of course, pricing, all to help you find that perfect specification that best meets your particular needs. So let's head over to that front end to discover why the car is celebrated for its unique design. So there's no denying that this is an absolutely gorgeous sports car and Toyota has done a great job at combining old and new design philosophies here. Uh, the first thing you'll probably notice is this extremely long bonnet that extends all the way down, very, very prominent indeed. And they're complemented by the strikingly large LED headlights, uh, both of which pay homage to the classic 1990s model. So yes, LED headlights do come as standard with this model. Uh, with the six cylinder Supra, these are LED dual beam headlights. Um, and LED daytime running lights come as standard, regardless of which one you go for, which is great to see. But yes, other than that, absolutely loving the design of the front end here. I love how the headlights just merge into what looks like a nose, actually, with that Toyota badging in the center there. And I really like the design of the air intakes as well. Um, it's a very clean look, very sleek but very, very imposing as well. Let's make our way down the side profile then where we'll spot nice design flourishes like this bit of plastic here that looks a little bit like an eyebrow or something like that. It just adds a nice bit of character to the car, which I do appreciate. Let's shimmy here and take a look at the power adjustable and heated door mirrors. And with the six cylinder model, these will come with a memory setting. So you can assign that in the car um, and then when you next set off, you can just press that and the mirrors will adjust to your preferred setting, which is great to see. So why are the door mirrors in this red then? Well, that's because we have the very limited Fuji Speedway model with us today. This was limited to just 200 examples across Europe and 45 in the UK. So it's a very exclusive offering. So this is the white metallic finish that comes with the Fuji Speedway edition, pays homage to the livery of Toyota Gazoo Racing. Uh, you can also configure this with the standard GR Supra, and that'll set you back around 710 pounds. Uh, there's a number of other different paint options as well. So you can just opt for the standard lightning yellow, so that won't cost you anything when you configure the car. Uh, you can choose Prominence Red, that's a premium paint, uh, and that will set you back around 610 pounds. And there's a number of other different metallic finishes as well. Uh, these include silver, ice gray and black. Another highlight of the Fuji Edition trim then includes these 19 inch matte black alloy wheels. They look absolutely gorgeous, don't they? Really, really love those. Um, as standard, these will be 18 inch black and silver, bitone, uh, five spoke wheels, and you can upgrade to larger 19 inch alloys should you wish with that six cylinder model. Let's take a look at the dimensions then. So in terms of width, the car is nearly identical to the BMW Z4 at 1,800. 
854 millimeters. Uh, but this car's much longer, and that's due to the, well, prominent front end that you saw earlier. So it measures uh, 4,379 millimeters across. At the wheelbase, that's the difference between these gorgeous uh, matte black alloys. That's 2,340 millimeters, so standard for a sports car. And height then, well, it's 1,299 millimetres. Again, typical for a sports car, and it's nice that it sits nice and low to the ground. Before we admire that rear end, I just want to show you a couple of things to do with the doors. So they do open very, very wide. So this is something you need to take into account when trying to fit between two cars in a tight car park. Uh, it's also quite difficult to get into the car because you sit really low down. Uh, if you're somebody with back problems, then yeah, you do need to take this into account. But yeah, very wide doors, don't bang them against the car next to you, for God's sake. Also quite like the detailing along the side here, adds a lot of character to the Cooper's design. And it merges with this line just up here that naturally leads you to that rear end. It's here that we get a better look at the Supra sloping roof line, which is a bit like a children's slide. So it starts here, then we off the top of that really prominent rear spoiler. Love how centrally the Toyota Supra badging is displayed there. Then we've got the GR badging just down there. And take a look at these really, really gorgeous LED rear tail lights. Love the design of these. Overall, it's a very unique looking rear end that's going to stand out on UK roads. I'm a massive fan of the overall design. But let me know what you make of it in the comments below, guys. Do you prefer the overall design here to some of this car's key rivals? I'd be interested to know your thoughts in the comments below. So obviously the Supra prioritizes performance and driving experience over practicality, but how much stuff can we pack into that boot space? Will you be able to drive to your local supermarket for the weekly grocery shop? Let's find out by popping open the boot, but how do we do so? Do we press the badge here? Perhaps there's something here? Or is there something under there? Unfortunately not. There's no external release whatsoever. So we need to hold down the button on the key fob and it will unlatch the boot for you. So we have 290 litres to work with here. That's 100 litres less than the BMW N2 competition by comparison. But that should be enough space to fit three possibly four of these small carry-on luggage uh, if you really pack them in quite tightly. So as you just saw there as I put that in, the car has quite a high loading lift and that does make it quite difficult to load heavy objects into the back here. I'm just going to take out the suitcase so I can highlight the tonner cover which I'm really impressed with. So it feels nice and premium. Oh. That's a bit hard to get out, <laughs> nice and premium. It's also pretty firm on the top there, so you could easily put objects on there. Um, I wouldn't recommend putting them there while on the move though, and I'll explain in just a moment. But yeah, you can fold it completely flat, and you can fold it like so. If you do need to maximize the boot space as much as possible, there is a little gap between the two front seats, and that will allow for a little bit more room for extra items. Though it is worth noting that there's no divider between the boot space and the front cabin space, as you can see. And this is both good and bad. Good in the sense that you can slide through longer objects like golf clubs, uh, possibly skis and long bits of wood into the front cabin if you need a little bit of extra space. Bad. And that is quite dangerous because you can't hook these down to the floor, um, to the boot floor, because there's no hooks or anything like that. So it just takes one sharp break and those objects could fly into the cabin and hit your windscreen, which obviously isn't very safe. So guys, if you're loving the look of the GR Supra, then do make sure to get in touch with one of OSV's vehicle specialists. And you can do so by calling 01903 538 835. Alternatively, you can just click that pop-out banner up there to book a free consultation at a date or time that works best for you. Uh, we're always on hand to answer any questions that you have, address your concerns, and most importantly, get you behind the wheel of your perfect GR Supra. Okay guys, let's put the suitcase back in and shut the boot because it's time to get behind the wheel of this superb sports car. I'm here all week.
So here we are then guys, we're behind the wheel of the Toyota GR Supra and wow, what a special sports car this is. So it's configured with automatic transmission, that eight speed auto. What is that like then? Well, it shifts through the gears very smoothly and as a result, it feels very responsive. But given that this is a sports car, you may want to try it in the manual mode um, and you cycle through the gears using the paddle shifters. Unfortunately though, you may find this to be a little bit jerky, it's not as responsive as a typical manual transmission, which is a bit of a shame, though I do think you'll be really pleased with the implementation of the automatic here. So this model we're driving today has the two litre four cylinder engine under the bonnet and there are a few advantages uh, with going with this engine over the three litre six cylinder unit uh, for a start is 100 kilograms lighter so that means this version is much more agile so if you're the kind of driver who prioritizes steering feel and responsiveness over performance then well i think this is going to be a better option for you so improving body rigidity was one of Toyota's priorities when designing the GR Supra. As a result, it's 2.3 times more rigid than the GT86, and this is something you'll certainly find is the case while on the move. The suspension is softer than you may expect for a supercar, and it does a pretty decent job at um, going over any humps and bumps in the road. It's not perfect, but it's not bad either. If you stick the car in sport mode, it will maximize grip and traction over the normal damping mode. And this is especially handy on a cold, damp day where you may find from stationary that the car starts to slide around when you put your foot down on the accelerator. So if you find that to be the case, do stick it in sport mode and that will improve the grip on the road. So what is the steering like then? Well, it is quite hard. It will take a little bit of time to get used to, but it is responsive and there's a great amount of adjustability to be had with the wheel itself. You can uh, pull that towards you and away from you and up or down to really find the most comfortable position for you. Let's talk about safety briefly then. So there's plenty of standard safety tech on offer, including lane departure assist, road sign assist, hill start assist, all the assists are here that you know and love in your new vehicles, which is great to hear. Um, it's also worth noting that Euro NCAP has not officially tested the GR Supra, but it has tested its cousin, the BMW Z4, and it was awarded five stars, the top safety rating, back in 2019. It scored 97% for adult occupant safety and 87% for child occupant safety. So pretty good safety ratings there, and it's something you won't have to worry about at all. Okay guys, I'm going to park up now and tell you about the interior. It's very different from what you may expect from a traditional Toyota due to BMW having their hand in the design here. So let's go check that out. Cool, so we've just pulled over to show you the interior, which as you may expect is absolutely lovely. So uh, this car shares a lot of design philosophy with the BMW Z4 as I explained earlier. Um, so the interior here is what you'd find in some of the latest BMW models. Lots of nice uh, material variety on display here. So on the dashboard, we've got a gorgeous leather effect trim with some gray stitching running across the bottom there. Really, really gorgeous. And there's lots of glossy materials as well. So there's a slight gloss material surrounding the uh, infotainment screen, which I'll talk about in, a, in just a sec. A uh, glossy button for the hazard lights. As we work our way down this uh, center console bit, there's a gloss uh, effect surrounding the climate controls, as well as the gear selector and the rotary and it gives it gives the whole interior here a really premium and plush feel my personal highlights then i just love these air vents that stretch from all the way on the left hand side all the way across below the infotainment screen all the way across the dashboard really really gorgeous very sleek and of course i love this red trim uh, this red interior trim so this comes with the fuji speedway edition model and it's used quite sparingly so it's just used on the wheel there on the center compartment bit around the uh, cup holders and on the seats so it's minimal therefore effective let's take a look at the steering wheel then so it's nice and chunky feels really nice to hold and the lever wrapped around it feels very premium it's a bit squidgy as well so it won't get too uncomfortable on a long journey uh, on the left hand side you have your cruise controls and on the right you've got a button to toggle between the different driving modes and your media controls so you can increase the volume of the radio or answer and reject calls while on the move 
Um, just behind the steering wheel then on the left and right hand side, you have paddle shifters. So this car is only available as an eight speed auto, uh, but you can go into the settings and put manual mode on, um, and then you can toggle between the different gears using these paddle shifters. It's not as, you know, immediate or satisfying as a general um, manual transmission, but if you want to experience what this car would be like um, as a manual car, then I guess it's a good solution. Behind the steering wheel then we have the driver's display and that shows you all the info right where you want it to be and need it to be. And the digital speedometer is in the center there. Really love the design of this. On the left hand side, you've got the rev counter and on the right, you've got your general information like the time, the temperature um, and how many miles you've covered in total. So it's nice to just glance at that occasionally while on the move and get all the information where you need it. You don't really need to look at that infotainment screen, which I will show you now. So that's the 8.8 .8 inch toy to touch multimedia system and the name is a little bit misleading because it's been installed with BMW's iDrive infotainment setup. That was the right decision though. Uh, BMW has the best infotainment systems in any vehicle these days in my opinion. Uh, the graphics are just so sharp. Uh, the menus are really easy to navigate while on the move and you can do so either through touch because it's a touch screen or using the rotary dial just down here next to the gear selector. It's in a really nice sort of natural position where you can, you're resting your elbow over those cup holders and just got your hand rested there. It's quite, you're just quite comfortable while navigating around the system. Uh, navigation is very, very good. You will no longer have to rely on Apple Maps or Google Maps. The in-app navigation will get you there from A to B in the most, uh, as efficiently as possible. Uh, my vehicle shows all the information that you need about your car. Um, it's nice to have that all collected in one space. And it comes with DAB radio as well. And Bluetooth works very nicely as well, connects your phone very quickly. So overall, great system. Uh, one big downside though, unfortunately, is that while you, it comes with Apple CarPlay, great for Apple users, it doesn't have Apple Android Auto, unfortunately. Um, so that means Huawei and Samsung users are gonna be pretty depressed. So just below the infotainment system, we have that aforementioned gorgeous air vent. Uh, that's obviously part of the climate controls and that works really well. It's a very, very cold day today. Um, as soon as I got in the car, put the heating on within about two minutes, had a nice and toasty cabin, which was absolutely lovely and well needed. Um, below the air vent, we have just some buttons that you can assign to whatever you want, really. Um, it's nice that they're touch sensitive, especially handy while on the move, but you can also press them in, like physical buttons. So good combination of the two. Below that then are the climate controls. Uh, heated seats come as standard, brilliant to hear. And there's a little display there. So if we just turn those on, you see there's a, just a tiny little screen there just showing you very clearly how hot or cold you've set the cabin. Great stuff. Below that then, sorry, I'm just getting quite emotional about the climate controls. Below that then we have a uh, little area for your keys or smartphone. If you upgrade to the three cylinder, sorry, the six cylinder, three cylinder is not fantastic for a sports car, it's six cylinder uh, unit, you get a wireless smartphone charger in that place instead. Uh, there's a USB port there and a 12 volt socket for charging a, a smartphone again or a laptop, tablet, if it fits, it probably doesn't. Um, gear selector, it's automatic, eight speed auto, uh, so it has all the controls as you would expect. And here is the rotary dial, BMW's lovely rotary dial, which you know I love. Um, and it has lots of nice, easy shortcut buttons around the side. That's pretty much it for the center compartment. So let's work our way down and check out the cup holders. Uh, does my bottle fit? Let's find out. Yes, it does. Uh, pretty securely as well. Great to see. And there's a little compartment at the back here as well. It's not particularly deep, uh, but you could fit some sweets or like chewing gum or something like that in there. So yeah, in terms of the practicality, the storage on offer here, and just the overall layout of the dash, pretty good in my opinion. How have we gone this long without talking about the seats? They are very comfortable and supportive, as you probably would have expected from a Toyota slash BMW sports car. Uh, you've got some nice cushioned side bolsters on the side there that hold you in place nicely when flying around a corner, which, let's face it, that's what you're going to do when driving this car. Of course, you sit quite low down in this vehicle, but there is a nice amount of adjustability to be had. Uh, there's manual adjustment for the height, as you can see, you can go down pretty far. Um, you can slide yourself back quite far as well. There we go. So drivers over six foot tall, not gonna have many issues getting behind the wheel of this car. They're not gonna be uncomfortable as well. And I've got a nice amount of headroom to work with. So I'm 5'8 and I've got pretty good, decent amount of headroom up there. So again, six foot drivers, 
won't have many issues. Um, it also comes with adjustable um, lumbar support, electrically adjustable lumbar support. So yeah, that feels great. You're gonna find a really comfortable driving position very easily. So the trim we have on these seats then, that's a red and black Alcantara leather and you get that with the Fuji Speedway Edition model. As standard, this will just be black Alcantara leather and if you upgrade to the six cylinder model, you get black leather. All of those trims look absolutely gorgeous but in particular, just, I just love the red notes dotted around the cabin with this particular interior trim. Adds a lot of personality, and otherwise the whole interior would be rather one note, just be very black. <laughs> but if that's your thing, then yeah, you're absolutely gonna love it. What's the visibility like then? Well, I'm just gonna fold out the mirrors so I can show you a bit more in depth. So it does feel a little bit claustrophobic and cramped in here, unfortunately, though that was a deliberate design decision from Toyota, not to make it feel claustrophobic, but to make it feel like a single seat race car. Um, as such, you don't feel like you have too much space to work with and that does affect visibility, unfortunately. Um, so you have quite a narrow view of the road ahead as it follows that really long bonnet out the front there. The windscreen is quite kind of tight and uh, enclosed. Um, the side pillars here, quite thin really, but the way that they strut out like that towards the, uh, the eyesight of the driver means you may have to lean around like that or perch around like that just to see around a corner and get around your blind spot. Uh, the mirrors are okay, pretty standard. You've got a decent view of what's behind you. And I've got to actually commend the rear view. It's not actually too bad for a coupe. Normally it's very tight and you really can't see anything at the back and they should just get rid of them. Um, but here it's fine. You've got a pretty good view. And plus you get a, re a reversing camera, rear view camera, and uh, parking sensors as standard. So on the whole, I, I do think visibility could be a little bit better considering the price of this car and how you would really not want to dent it in any way, shape or form, but it probably does enough, it does enough. Final bits of note then, so the glove box is okay. It just about holds the manual that comes with the car. You could fit a couple of other bits and bobs in there. Other than that, not too impressive. Uh, the door bins are pretty dire. Uh, they would no way you're going to fit a 500ml bottle in there, possibly a 200ml bottle, but it will be a tight squeeze. It's quite a narrow space to work with. Um, but there is some netting on the front passenger side. So just down here, you can lean down and you can wedge your bottle in there. And that's going to be nice and secure-ish <laughs> on a long journey. So guys, overall, I'm pretty impressed with the GR Supra's interior. While it can feel a little bit claustrophobic if you're not used to this type of car, you know, a low riding coupe, um, I'm really impressed with the level of luxury and technology on offer considering the price of the vehicle. I think it really does match that. So if this is a car you can see yourself driving then, um, and you'd like a little bit more information for one of OSV's vehicle specialists, then just pick up the phone and give us a call on 01903 538 835 or you can just click the pop-up banner it's hanging out just up there to book a free consultation at a time that works for you okay at this point in the review i usually say uh, let's hop in the back to check out the space on offer for rear passengers but there's only two seats in this car so it's time to check out the powertrains by popping open the bonnet and you do so by tugging the lever just on the right hand side there just tug it twice like you would in the bmw and it will unlatch for you so let's open that up and check out the powertrains. So all engine options are equipped with the eight speed automatic transmission with the paddle shifters. There's no manual option available, unfortunately, but this just flies right open and stays up for you. Fantastic to see. So the first engine option, that is the GR Supra two litre Pro and Fuji edition. Uh, so as the name suggests, it's equipped with a two litre uh, four cylinder turbocharged petrol engine. Uh, power is sent to the rear wheels via that eight speed automatic transmission. Uh, it produces 258 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque for an impressive 0 to 62 miles per hour time of just 5.3 seconds. So this unit is configured with the McPherson strut front and multi-link rear suspension setup uh, controlled via adapted dampers to so you can set how soft or firm the suspension is depending on the kind of terrain that you're driving along, which is great to see. Um, and top speed is electronically limited to uh, 155 miles per hour. So you won't be having too much fun on the Autobahn. There'll be lots of cars flying past you. Given that it's a sports car, low running costs weren't exactly the priority for Toyota when it came to developing this car. But having said that, it is a little bit more efficient than a number 
of its rivals. So it can achieve around 38.7 miles per gallon on the WLTP cycle. Um, that is achievable in real life if you drive sensibly around town. Um, but it does output quite a lot of CO2, up to 167 grams per kilometer. You're not really afforded that much in the way of savings when it comes to looking at this car as a company vehicle. The most powerful engine option is the 3 litre six cylinder unit and this is the same configuration you'll find in the Z4 M40i performance car and as you may expect it sounds much more brawnier than that 2 litre engine. Uh, so this outputs around 340 horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque for a very impressive 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 4.3 seconds. Again, no top speed is limited electronically to 155 miles per hour. This unit is not as efficient as the two litre model, so expect 34.4 miles per gallon on the WLTP cycle, though this is better than the BMW M2 competition's 27 miles per gallon, and it does output a fair bit of CO2 as well, 188 grams per kilometre, again putting that in the top uh, 37% company car tax band. If you'd like to find out more about the different engine options, find the one that best suits your particular needs, then get in touch with OSV's vehicle specialists on 01903 538 835 or click that pop-up banner to book a time and a date that works best for you for a quick chat through your options. Okay guys, it's getting really, really cold right now so we're going to hop back into the front where i'll tell you about the trim levels the different equipment that's on offer for each of them and of course how much they cost so guys let's talk about trim levels so the two liter cars can be equipped with the pro or the limited edition fuji speedway trims while the more powerful three liter cars can be configured with the pro specification and generally speaking the gr supra is a bit more affordable than two of its key rivals, the Porsche Cayman and the Jaguar F-Type. Firstly, we have the two litre Pro specification, and this starts from 46,010 pounds. Uh, some of my personal highlights of this trim include 18 inch black and silver alloy wheels that I talked about a little bit earlier, really, really nice. The active sports differential, and this maximizes speed and grip while accelerating and cornering around bends. Uh, you get the Toyota Supra Safety Plus pack. This comes with a number of different features, including the pre-collision system with cyclist and pedestrian detection, uh, lane keep assist, uh, road sign assist, a number of different other features as well. So it's nice to have a comprehensive uh, list of safety features there. Uh, you get that 8.8 inch media touchscreen, um, you get LED headlights and daytime running lights as well. So it's great to see that you get lots of equipment with that standard spec and it's especially impressive for a sports car. So if you love the sound of a Porsche, but you're a little bit disappointed by the fact that they're pretty bare bones when it comes to their technology, then the Supra could be a really, really good option. Next up the ladder, we have the Fuji Speedway trim and this starts from £47,410. A number of highlights of this trim I've already, well, highlighted throughout the video, but these include the 19 inch matte black alloy wheels, which look absolutely lovely. Uh, chrome inserts on the dashboard and that red and black interior trim with the red and black Alcantara seats, massive fan of those. So if you can get your hands on the Fuji Speedway trim, you're not gonna be disappointed and it's one of the best looking sports cars out there. Last up then, we have the three litre pro specification and this starts from 54,365 pounds. Uh, personal highlights for me include the 19 inch black and silver alloy wheels, uh, the black leather sports seats, which are power adjustable and reclining, and they also have a memory function so you can play around with it for a bit and save that setting click it when you get back into the car and it will line it all up for you nicely, just as you remembered. You get a few more safety features as well, including adaptive cruise control. Um, you also get more techie features like the wireless smartphone charging pad and the head up display, as well as LED dual beam headlights. So if you really wanna maximize your GR Supra to its fullest capability, then you absolutely must go for this top spec trim level. So guys, I hope you found that useful. Let me know which trim level you will go for in the comments below. So it's getting a bit gloomy outside. So I think it's about time we wrapped up the review. So guys, should you buy, lease or finance a Toyota GR 
Supra, well there's lots of benefits to doing so. You're rewarded with a car that has such a gorgeously attractive design. It's really visually stunning, stands out among the other sports cars out there. You get an excellent driving position, though that does take a little bit of time to get used to. You have lots of leg room and it's very comfortable to sit in, especially on long journeys. Um, very, very exciting six cylinder performance when you opt for that higher spec engine. It's also pretty decently fuel efficient um, for a sports car if you drive it sensibly, which I know you will. Um, it comes with a generous amount of standard equipment as well, even if you opt for that high spec trim, you're not missing out on a whole lot. So you can do with that entry level trim and you'll be absolutely fine with that. And compared to rivals, it's got a lot more tech on offer. And the tech on offer is BMW's tech, which is an extra plus from me. Really hope you enjoyed this in-depth look at the GR Supra guys. If you did, then give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel as well. There's over 95% of you who watch our videos that are not subscribed, so please do so if you enjoy OSV's content. And once you are subscribed, then make sure to click that notification bell above to get notified when new videos go live. But I'm gonna take advantage of my time with the GR Supra and have a bit more fun with it. In the meantime though guys, have a superb day and safe driving. Bye.